The fallout from defund the police continues, continues to decimate Seattle police numbers. Not able to recruit enough, not able to retain enough. Numbers are personally alarming, says the Seattle police chief, as he presents ideas as officers' numbers sink. Ugh, not going well here in Seattle. Who would have thought? Who would have thought aftermath of that defund the police thing would still be impacting us in 2024? A lot of us did. We made that known, right? Let's get into it. Here we go. This is a video from September of 2020. This was, remember the Summer of Love was basically May through early July. Early July is when CHOP got shut down. That's when I kind of refer to it. Ah, it's Summer of Love for about a couple of weeks. Two black kids get murdered. This was September. This was shortly thereafter. August, everybody's, ah, defund the police, greatest thing ever. Never mind those two black kids that got murdered in the police no-go zone. Don't worry about that. This is going to be the greatest thing ever. Defund the police. Here's a video that covered it at that time. This is not the 50% cut that demonstrators have been demanding all summer long, but also this is not the compromise plan B that we told you about on Monday that the mayor had agreed to. But for those who do want to see the police defunded, they say this is a step in the right direction. But some in Seattle's business community say this is just another setback to add to the list of 2020. It has been a hell of a summer and it has been a hell of a 400 years for the black and brown and indigenous communities. They deserved better. After listening to 90 minutes of public comment overwhelmingly in favor of overruling the mayor's veto of cuts to SPD's budget, that's exactly what the city council did. The mayor's veto is overridden. In three votes, the council overruled the mayor's August veto, meaning bills to reinvest those funds into the community will pass. This came as a surprise as just yesterday, Council President Lorena Gonzalez laid out a possible plan B that would only cut a million dollars from SPD's budget this year, as well as some other changes. The mayor agreed to that. Nine in favor, none opposed. Now, SBD is faced with a $3 million reduction, the loss of 100 jobs, and cuts to programs like the navigational team. I want to be able to tell my daughter, who I'm currently holding in my arms, that I did the right thing and that I voted on the right side of history. In a statement, King County Equity Now and Decriminalize Seattle, two groups at the forefront of Seattle's racial justice movement, said although the cut is only about 1% of SBD's budget, this is an encouraging step, saying, quote, today we celebrate the work that we've all put in to make this opportunity a reality. The majority of the few public comments, though, asking the council to sustain the vetoes were from Seattle's business community. Well, we're absolutely concerned about how this is going to affect Seattle. Laura Radford from the West Seattle Junction Association says between COVID-19 and a rise in security concerns, taking away resources is only going to kick small businesses while they're already down. Small businesses, they create the fabric of our neighborhoods and we need them to come back stronger than ever. And with the vote today, we're not sure if that's going to be able to happen. A few hours after that vote, the mayor's office did release a three-paragraph response. So the mayor said, in part, the mayor thought they had built that consensus on many issues in the compromise legislation introduced yesterday, Monday. While council members have publicly stated they wanted to work with Mayor Durkin to address issues in the 2020 budget, they chose a different path. As far as that $3 million figure that will be taken out of SBD's budget for the remainder of the year, uh, we do not have a set plan on how exactly that will be reinvested into the community. Yeah. And it doesn't matter now because it just, it didn't go well. It, this whole thing didn't go well. And everybody knows, it. everybody knows that was a terrible idea. Just ah, defund the police, greatest concept ever. Mm, no. No, it wasn't, folks. That was just that was just knuckleheadedness right there, right? Shenanigans, I say. All right, let's get into this article. Seattle uh, City Council members were briefed on the Seattle Police Department's recruitment project on Tuesday. <laughs> and they were not pleased. It's like, all right, so what are you really doing here? Because we don't have enough cops up in here. What are you really doing here? Well, here's my 14-point PDF document on my PowerPoint presentation. 
Some council members criticize the department for losing more officers than were hired in recent years. That has been the ongoing trend. That has been why you've got you know, numbers of criminal activity rising in areas. And then people saying, no, no, they're, they're actually dropping, Sean. It's because nobody's reporting them anymore. Council member Rob Saka, District 1, said it was unsettling to see the low staffing numbers. Everybody keeps saying that in all of these cities across the United States. We have concern. It's unsettling. This is unsustainable. Kind of sounds like the mayors of the Democrat-run sanctuary cities, right? This is unsettling. Uh, It's not sustainable. I am personally alarmed and dismayed to see that, he said. Seattle Police Department Chief Adrian Diaz reported Tuesday on his project presentation The staffing levels are at their lowest with over 700 officers departing his department since 2019. You know, if you had a police department like, um, uh, yeah, here it is, New York City, 36,000 officers and you lose 700. Okay. All right. But when you've only, when you only got, you know, thousand, you know, 1400, I think it was when, when they began something like that, 1500. In a big city like Seattle, and and you lose them? Yeah, it's the lowest levels since the 1990s, and the population has increased significantly. In comparison, the population of Seattle is 733,000, according to the United States uh, Census Bureau. That means there is one law enforcement officer for every 804 people who reside in the city of Seattle. That number is closer to 236. So, New York City as 36,000 in a city of 8.5 million. So New York City per person has literally three times as many cops because they have prioritized policing. They know they need the cops. They learned from that whole Rudy Giuliani thing, right? Just like, okay, all right. Even though some uh, some of the migrant crime stories coming out right now, I know you guys are sending those to me left and right. And you know what? Individual stories, those I, I try and work those in, but I oftentimes don't report on those because it's like, all right, somebody got assaulted. Eh, that's terrible. But what's the real story? So I'm always working on, all right, what's the greater picture here? And the greater picture in today, and this, this topic right here is that the impact of defund the police is still wildly significant. But on top of that, it's the overall attitude towards policing. In these big blue Democrat run cities, right? It's that attitude. Oh, we don't really like cops. Yeah, we don't, we're not, we're not really down with the police. Well, and it shows. And nobody wants to be a cop in your community. So good luck with that. Enjoy. Have fun. Diaz, Diaz, the police, Seattle police chief, he told the council Tuesday that num that pay is the number one factor for incoming officers and that 14 other local cities pay more. So let's take a look at that real quick. Let's just see what does that mean. So you've got you've got the big mothership Seattle, and then you've got this little fine graph here from his report. All the way down at fifteen, you've got Seattle, and they're paying eighty three grand. Seattle's got a thirty thousand dollar bonus for police officers for uh, a lateral, meaning somebody that's already a cop, they're ready to go, up and running, thirty k, and then you've got seventy five hundred for a new hire. But the bottom line is, those are one-time payments, and if you're only making 83, why not apply with Redmond, where Microsoft is? I'm literally a couple of miles from Redmond's um, uh, one Microsoft way in, in Microsoft headquarters. You're 101,000 there. Kent, which is a city just to the south of here, is at 96. Bellevue, my hometown here and where I'm recording from, 95,000. Everett. 94 and it goes on down so seattle probably has the most criminal activity and yet it pays not top five not top 10 barely in the top 20 so it's not shocking that seattle has a recruiting police problem so george floyd's death at the hands of officers from the minneapolis police department well was it really at the hands? I know there were hands physically there from police officers, but if you watch that whole documentary that came out recently, you're like, hmm, I've watched it a couple of times. I mean, that really made me think, 
boy, there's some shenanigans going on there. You, you've got some tomfoolery in there, the way that case was handled. And um, at the hands of officers from the Minneapolis Police Department in May 2020, sparked conversations about police brutality and racism. I think that was just a wildly opportunistic time period. And the far left, the extreme left, they just went ham. And they did a really great job at doing that. They're, they're really good at that. They're really good at that. You're there to protect and serve the communities that you live in. And if you see something wrong, like racial injustice, you need to have the courage to say something, said former Washington police officer Craig Dockstatter in an interview with Cairo News Radio in 2020. You know, everything since 2020 has been upside down and backwards. We've kind of tried to get back to the way things were, but I, I don't think that's, that's, that's not going to happen in the short term. And in so many of these communities where you did defund the police and you've got a significant number of residents that are saying, still defund the police. When I drive around Seattle, you will still see Black Lives Matter and defund the police in people's homes. And you're like, okay, yeah, you didn't see how that all worked out. You didn't see the train wreck that came from all of that. All right, okay. So now you're, you know, you are blessed with fewer cops protecting your community and keeping your community safe. One of the things I was going to say is that we are continually having businesses shut down here in Seattle, continually having businesses shut down. And right now, one of the hotbeds of activity is the Aurora Avenue North Highway 99. It is just loaded with prostitutes. It is loaded with human trafficking. I mean, they are literally walking around all kinds of weather day and night in less than negligee. Let's just say that less than negligee, small stuff, right? Not that, not that I'm going to wear my pajamas to bed kind of stuff. They're just literally out there showing all of their wares. And this is ongoing and businesses are struggling. Businesses are shutting down. And the police department, they've, they've kind of got this area where it's just been given a hall pass. There's not enough cops. They're off, you know, working on real cases. And, but the, the amount of human trafficking going on that part of Seattle is, is mind blowing. And it's a major arterial to the north of Seattle that you go through. You just drive up there any any point in time. And because Seattle is a city that has decided, yeah, def defunding our police is the greatest concept, and then also not arresting prostitutes, however you want to call them, I don't know what the particular term is today, um, <laughs> Wish we had a term like newcomers that we could place on them, but um, sex opportunists, I butchered that last word, but I don't know, right? Because we don't have a law in the books that allows the police to arrest them while they are out parading their wares. And I mean, they're parading all of them. It's just this free for all. You've got an open system where pimps are out there and the, the girls are out there and it's just this craziness, but businesses are shutting down left and right because that's not exactly, hey, come to my business. Where are you located? Ah, uh, 105th in Aurora. Oof, yeah. No thanks. I uh, appreciate you taking my call. Click. You know, because who wants to deal with that kind of stuff? Seattle Police Department is unleashing flashbangs, mace, tear gas. They're running into protesters with their bikes. They have very large sticks. They're wearing riot gear. So the only option is to begin to fund and de de demilitarize. We're calling for a 50% defund of the Seattle Police Department, and we demand that those dollars be invested in community-based alternatives to incarceration, community-based alternatives for public safety. And this was said by community organizer, attorney, and former Seattle mayoral candidate, Nikita Oliver. Good Lord. Thanks. Thank so thankful she did not win. That would have been, that would have been just, that would have been like Hades going on right now. Have you watched, uh, followed up on any of the, um, the, the, the gang leader named Barbecue? Yeah, Barbecue. Got a little, just a scooch of cannibalism going on in Haiti. They're not, they're not eating them because they're hungry. They're eating them just to, you know, prove a point. Hey, I'm hardcore. Going to eat this dude's hand. That kind of thing, right? And a lot of folks are saying, oh, they're not really cannibals. When you eat, other human beings' flesh, you are a cannibal. I don't care. You chew it up, 
Oh, it's just gross, right? Just so gross. That whole Haiti thing, that's not going to go well. I know Ron DeSantis down in uh, Florida, he's, um, he's mobilizing the troops because they're expecting a big uh, litany of people to come out of Haiti, and I don't blame them. You've got some real instability there. In 2020, Cairo News Radio also talked to the director of the Soto Business Improvement Area, Aaron Goodman, about the city proposals, uh, city council's proposal to axe 50% of the Seattle Police Department's budget. In the end, in the end, they whacked about 17%. So we're not talking huge numbers, but it's more the impact it had on the psyche of people who might have wanted to become cops at that point in time. All you had to watch was like one segment of the evening news here in Seattle, and you would have seen, you know, just defund the police. We hate the cops. Cops are terrible. Get rid of all the cops. Bring in the social workers. You know, all of this just absolute ridiculousness. You know, shenanigans for days during that summer of love, right? You're probably familiar. We worked last year bringing attention the prolific offender situation in Seattle. And I would say that Soto businesses are very supportive of the police department and they feel they're very responded to. You got to have a police force that's able to go out and protect their folks and specifically in the business community. But there are so many break-ins happening because we don't have bandwidth of enough cops. So that's kind of, that's, that's what's driving a lot of this, but this is the overall, this is what happens in a blue liberal run democrat city this is what happens and um people want to justify it by saying yeah but there's there's always a lot of crime big cities have big crime well there's similar sized cities that didn't defund their police that have been able to recruit and hold their police officers because they respect their police officers typically those are not states or cities located on the west coast don't have a lot of that you got some here in Eastern Washington, you've got some communities that would fall under that, but they're so far away from Seattle. Same thing in Oregon. You've got Eastern Oregon. You've got communities in Eastern Oregon where they are so far away from the shenanigans of the big city that they just, they do not fall, you know, within the impact and the negative impact, I would say. So, however, there are other elements within the entire criminal justice system that are also not functioning. That would mean that someone might be arrested on their property and then taken back, might be back the very next day. We see that time and time and time again. Just, oh, here's a good example of that. (laughs) Yesterday, was it the day before? I think it was Tuesday. On Tuesday, I had a text. Yeah, it was Tuesday. I had a text from Andrea Suarez of We Heart Seattle. Gal goes out and she and her crew and her um, company, they go out and they do outreach to the homeless encampments. So she texted me and she said, Steve Irwin's back. And that's the, um, that's the excavator man, the mining man in the Seattle park. Did a little bit of logging, a little bit of mining, a little bit of excavating. I mean, he is literally a Renaissance man, but he was arrested. His entire, you know, cabin made out of logs that he had, <laughs> he had logged from the Seattle city park from Dr. Jose Rizal Park, uh, his encampment got cleared out, took away all of the generators, his outhouse, his mining operation. He had an open pit mining operation. That happened, what, a couple of weeks ago? A couple of weeks ago. And then he's back. He's out of jail. He's back. He's back with a generator living in the park. So Seattle, uh, Andrea was going to text... I think she called Seattle Parks and Rec and said, hey, guy's back. But this happens so often. It's because you've got a bunch of people on drugs and you got a bunch of people that are wildly mental. They, they need to be in an institution somewhere getting some help. I'm not saying that Steve Irwin, our excavator man, our mining man, renaissance man, I'm not saying he's mental, but he needs to get off the drugs, right? I mean, let's be honest. Because that whole thing. That's why he's returning. That's why he's logging in a city park. Because he gets, he gets whacked out on meth and he just, uh, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm just going to keep doing this. Got 14 different projects all going at the same time, right? As you do on meth and everybody recognizes that. But in big cities where you don't incarcerate people and you don't have enough cops, this is what you get. It's like, ah, right, here's your sign. What'd you think was going to happen? 
Diaz said, um, police chief Diaz said in April of 2021, that more than 200 officers left their jobs in the year after Floyd's murder, citing an anti-police climate in Seattle. Absolutely. We've got probably one of the worst, right? We're standing tall in that department right next to uh, Portland. Portland, horrible down there. I mean, because you've also got this kind of Pacific Northwest, this whole thing where people are woke and, you know, they're all about the Northwest and we don't like police. And it just, it, it's infuriating for me to live here. But I live in a community, Bellevue, and so it only takes me a, you know, a few minute drive and I'm into Seattle. And you, the, the, the difference is so noticeable. The first thing you notice is massive amounts of graffiti when you get to the Seattle side. It's just, boom, all of a sudden starts because you're basically going to get from where I am to Seattle. You have to go across a bridge. You'll go across 520, which is just to the north of me, or Interstate 90, just to the south of me by a handful of miles. And the minute you get over Lake Washington, big, huge body of water, the minute you get over Lake Washington, the graffiti starts because you're in Seattle, because it's free Seattle, because you've just got you know, rocket scientists everywhere with their spray cans, you know, beautifying the city. It's just, it's terrible. Seattle police chief said that at the time that with a deployable force of over 1,075 officers, the department was in a staffing crisis. And now we're 200 cops less. I mean, we keep talking about there being a catastrophe waiting to happen. At some point in time, that'll probably happen. And I'll be podcasting on it, you know, probably for days. Because it'll be something horrific, some kind of natural disaster, some kind of, you know, somebody takes out a hundred, uh, you know, somebody shoots a hundred people, something like that. And all the Seattle uh, police resources will have to go to that. And the rest of the city will just be, all right, fend for your own guys. Yeah, call into the answering, the voice service, let them know you got a problem. Diaz also said the department is looking into providing help with housing and ch- child care to retain hundreds more patrol and civilian staff. All of these things are good, and that's great, because it's super expensive to live in Seattle and you know afford housing and child care and all that stuff. It's expensive. It's, ex- it's really expensive in Seattle for what you get, right? You're like, I get a bunch of graffiti for that? Wow, where do I sign up? Let me buy a house there. It's because of the employment. We've got so many big companies that are in Seattle that you know, people want to live close to where they got to be at work. And that whole work from home forever thing, yeah, that went bye-bye. That went bye-bye just like the defund the police did, right? Now we're back to um, yeah, four days a week, three days a week, four days a week. But that remote work forever, ah, that, went, that went sayonara. So those struggles of day childcare, those struggles of trying to maintain certain things at home are all something that we have to pay attention to. And what I was going to say was that's great. But if you've still got a climate where people do not like the police, it's not going to work out well, right? It's not going to work out well. And the citizenry of Seattle, there are some that do, but vast majority. I mean, the ones that still have up, Black Lives Matter, the ones that still have up, defund the police. It's like, okay, did you not learn anything from that? They don't care. That's where they sit politically. Don't like the police, horrible, they're murdering people left and right. And you're like, okay, did really look at the stats? Have you really looked into a lot of these cases? Did you take a real hard look at the fentanyl Floyd story? I mean, just really look at it. Just objectively look at it. And you're like, what? This doesn't add up. This doesn't make any sense at all. Diaz said that he was told to speed up officer hires. (laughs) Make them come in. Make people be cops. Arrest them if they don't. However, he said recruiters are trying to stay nimble and that the city may need to provide more than good pay to rebuild its force. You need top dollar pay. You need all these bennies. And then you also need to have a city that wants to actually employ cops. Right now, you don't. So you can try and go after these people all day long. But ultimately, people know if cops are in demand. People know, all right, is that a profession I really want to get into? Uh, Yeah, not so much. Because only about 3% of the cops that actually apply make it through the whole system. 3%. It's a, um, you know, it's a gauntlet. Diaz said the department is also considering housing subsidies as it works to hire 375 more officers. Um, 
need to analyze what's going on. A lot of this other stuff is we're just not going to market our way out of this, but let's continue that at work and build upon it. You know, I did look at the, I did look at, let's take a look, take, take a peek at this. Now there is, they, they have gone through all kinds of stuff. They're running a business. Here's the Seattle Police Department media plan. I'm not sure if you can read that, but um, yeah, because I kind of shrunk this. We need to go a little bigger. How about that? There we go. You've got media results. You've got all kinds. You've got impressions here. They are working on strategies of getting more people in. You've got clicks. You're talking click-through rate there. You're talking applications. You're talking about videos. You got videos here that you're putting out, trying to get people in recruitment because, you know, not everybody wants to be a cop and sometimes people need to be proud of, what about being a police officer? Oh yeah. Get that kind of started, right? Get that started. But even with that, Seattle is 15th on the list. So you've got kind of the perfect storm here for just not enough cops to run the city. And that's what I've I've been hammering on that forever. And you are seeing some of the end results of that in the inability for a lot of businesses to basically stay, stay open. And then you've got, you know, highway 99, you've got these areas of the city that are just, it's kind of a free for all. You've got Pike and Pine. That's been that way for a long time. The blade, you've got the international district where you just don't have you don't have the the raw bodies like you do in New York City of cops to just put them on whatever. And even then, Governor Hochul in New York City bringing in the National Guard because <laughs> with 36,000 cops or whatever it was in New York City, they're still not able to basically provide a safe environment in their subway system for all the people riding back and forth. Thank heaven Seattle does not have a subway system. Right. I mean, that bad boy. You imagine that? Hey, which which one you want to ride? You want to ride Portland's or you want to ride Seattle's subway system? Walk down those stairs. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll work out just fine. Now, you've got uh, you've got this sentiment that has created a situation where nobody wants to be a cop. And if you're not paying top dollar, you're not going to get enough cops in there. I don't know what Seattle's going to do. I, I honestly don't. I don't know how you're going to turn the sentiment around. And maybe you don't. I think I think you just you're like, all right, is what Seattle's working with. That's why I don't want to live there. I mean, it'll create a further divide. But as long as big businesses are operating in downtown Seattle, you know, this is what you're working with. So even in the communities in Seattle that have been considered safe, I'm hearing from more and more people saying, yeah, I mean, the criminals know there's not enough cops in Seattle, so. And and that's not just a Seattle problem. We just read about you know, Pittsburgh, and um, you know it's happening there. It's happening in a lot of these big towns that all went down. Greatest concept ever. Shenanigans for days. Let's defund our police. This will be epic. We're going to be such a safe community after this. We're going to get to the root causes. We're gonna we're gonna just make this happen. Yeah, and then it didn't. And then we're still talking about it. Twenty twenty four. After the vast majority of us said, that's a terrible idea. What are you thinking there? It's what we're working with. It's where we sit. And I don't know, moving forward, I don't know how this is going to get, you know, how is, how is this, how is this going to get much better? You've been working for years and trying to get more cops. I don't know. You're going to have to pay them 120 grand. Even then, all right, 95, 120, is that going to move the needle? Get a 30 K bonus? You die on the job every day. Unless you're in love with law enforcement, it's not going to happen. All right. That's it for me on this one. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for supporting. Love to have you subscribe if you haven't. That's it for me. I'm going to check out. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.